um, I'm an aspiring actor, and I just received a part that I deeply connect with the almighty Cthulhu with. Um, I was just wondering, while I'm developing my character, um, if there are any details of your life, the happy, the sad, the angry, the deeply angry, um, <laughs> just so I can make my character, you know, a bit more three-dimensional, that'd be great, thanks. Huh, okay. How to get in touch with the dark side, by Cthulhu. <laughs> hmm. You gotta understand, it's more or less second nature to me. Here, take a good look into these eyes. <laughs> that'll, uh, that'll get you started, at least. Give you something to think about in the morning. Uh, more than that, I don't know. Somebody earlier was asking about Scott Sigler. You should really take a look at some of those books. They'll get you an idea of how everybody feels. <laughs> Thanks, for Thanks for asking, and I'll swallow your soul. Next question! Ugh, the suckers! <laughs> Dear Cthulhu, I know you're going to swallow my soul, and that's fine with me. Personally, I think if I'm going to get devoured and my soul is going to get taken, it might as well be as someone as qualified as you are. And I know there will be destruction and death when you awaken, and that's great! Well, I am a licensed certified technician with three aeons of experience in soul swallowing. <laughs> <laughs> but you never mentioned what will happen to the animals. I assume all the land animals will die as you ravage the planet. But what about life, the sea life, like the little seahorses? Will the sea animals be destroyed? And if so, will you swallow the souls of both man and beast alike? Sincerely, Dan of PA. Well, as you know, I've had a lot of time to hang out with the creatures of the deep. And we all have a pretty good understanding of what's going to happen, and how it's going to go down when the time comes. As it is, I expect to have the dolphins on my side, using the psionic powers you always knew they had but could never prove. <laughs> <laughs> the starfish have sworn undying loyalty, but really, what's a starfish going to do? Grow on you? <laughs> anyway, the teeming depths know which side they want to be on, so look for a wave of killer cuttlefish on the big day. <laughs> Thanks for asking, and I'll swallow your soul. Next question! Thank you! <laughs> I'm a big fan, and I see all this Cthulhu merchandise out in comic shops. You know, figures and art, plush hand puppets. Do you get a cut on the profits? I mean, they're using your face. No, see, and this is one of those things that really chaps my hide. They don't use my face, saying something like, if we used your image, everybody would go crazy when they looked at the t-shirts. Well, that's all well and good until you see that they're still making the t-shirts, <laughs> only they don't pay you because they don't use their image. The hell is that about? Anyway, there will come a time. Don't worry. I'll take care of them. Thanks for asking, and I'll swallow your soul. Next question! Good luck! Ah! <laughs> Cthulhu. Are there any new gods or deities being brought into existence during these times? I heard that once enough beings believe the idea of a particular god or deity, they can sometimes be willed into existence. If this is true, and given the general gullible nature of man, what's ra running around the cosmos these days? Sincerely, Brian S. As far as I can tell, the only really new gods I've seen in the last decade or so were the invisible pink unicorn, the flying spaghetti monster, <laughs> I see we've got a few Pastafarians in the group. <laughs> Raw men. <laughs> and Murray the Rat God. <laughs> and yeah, because gods are built on belief, these guys are now just as real as the other gods. Choose wisely. <laughs> Thanks for asking, and I'll swallow your soul. Next caller! Oh. So. Okay. Hi, Cthulhu. I'm a big fan of yours, so I just have one favor. Could you please drive me mad and haunt my dreams? And when I die, could you consume my soul? It would be great. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Hey, what kind of multidimensional being would I be if I wasn't willing to swallow the soul of someone who's asking for it? You got it, buddy. Just keep staring into the sun and listening to Brady Bunch music, and the madness will be right there. <laughs> Thanks for asking, and I'll swallow your soul. Next question. I see it! <laughs> show and looking forward to the endless madness you shall bring upon the earth with your rise. I was wondering, when you do rise and begin your feast upon all the souls of humanity, what will happen to all the earth animals that roam the earth? 
Will they also succumb to your madness and inevitable di digestion? Or will you just let them be? Thanks, M.A. and P.A. Honestly, you'd have to point out some difference between humanity and animal entity. I mean, you all look alike to me. <laughs> but how would I differentiate you? Only eat mammals? Well, I'm pretty sure humans are just a subset of mammals. Brain size? <coughs> I might accidentally eat the dolphins and whales before the humans. Only eat bipeds? Well, there's some bears and kangaroos that would take a dim view on that decision. Nope, no room for favoritism. Everybody goes. Thanks for asking, and I'll swallow your soul. Next question! <laughs> Dear Cthulhu, I've been studying the pre-Socratic and post-Socratic philosophers, and I've noticed that they all seem to have different concepts of the nature of the soul. So could you tell me whether souls are one singular object, or several interconnected parts, or maybe several, se several separate souls that reside within the same space? Yours truly, Chooch. Souls are like those little yellow dots in Pac-Man. You have to take them individually, but they're interconnected, so you have to get them all before you move to the next level. Alpha Centauri, I guess, or Europa. Of course, I suppose the ghost would be Hastur and his bunch of airy bastards running around and spoiling everybody's fun. Anyway, hope that helps. Thanks for asking, and I'll swallow your soul. Next question. Hi, Cthulhu. Um, I was wondering, I, I know you're a um, omnipotent... Um, I know you have everything that you could want, but is there... <laughs> Is, is there anything in, in the world that you don't have, I mean, that you could want, but don't have? Thank you. Um, Bran. <laughs> Honestly, eyebrows. If I had eyebrows, I, if I had eyebrows, you could tell the difference between this and this. <laughs> yeah, but thanks for asking, and I'll swallow your soul. Next question. <laughs> hey Cthulhu, in this story, the Cthulhu cult is based in New Orleans. Do you like Jambalaya? Kyle Fisher. The New Orleans cult was one of the craziest freaking sects I've got on my speed dial. <laughs> you know, a while back they contacted me, said they found a way to raise Relier by controlling the weather. They said they could bring down storms that would flood the world and bring about the coming of the old ones. I uh, never heard back from them after that. I should really check in with them sometime. <laughs> and hey, who doesn't love jambalaya? That stuff's great. Of course, it needs the right seasoning, and it's so hard to find virgins these days. Still, when you can get it prepared just right, it's some good eating. Thanks for asking, and I'll swallow your soul. <laughs> Next question. Hello, Cthulhu. My question is, if I sue you for trying to swallow my soul, would you hold a grudge against me, Kevin B? Well, you can't do it posthumously, and your heirs will probably be spending a lot of time running around gibbering, and too busy <laughs> killing each other to even get past the discovery phase of a lawsuit, so I'm not too scared about that. Also, every lawyer on the planet will be so tied up in insurance fraud cases, I doubt anyone would take a piddly little grand theft soul case. Good luck, though, and I'll see whatever's left of you in court. <coughs> Thanks for asking, and I'll swallow your soul. Next Thank question! You. <laughs> 